Greetings subscribers and other curious persons. Welcome to another vlog inspired by the Goodreads Tuesday Talks group. This week's topic is, have you ever returned to a book you didn't finish and finished it? Simple easy answer, once that I can remember. Dostoevsky's Crime and Punishment. I borrowed it from the university library when I was doing my post-grad and hadn't finished it when the loan term expired because I was kind of hectic at university and someone else had requested it so I couldn't renew it. So I took it back and I hadn't been enthralled enough that I wanted to put in a request to have it when that person finished with it or to track down a copy from Bristol Central Library because there wasn't one on the shelves at that time. So that went on my didn't finish list, although back in those days I didn't have an official did not finish list. It was just one of the few books I hadn't finished. And then a couple of years ago I saw a copy sitting on the shelf, Bristol Central Library, and thinking that it hadn't been terrible enough that I'd actively stopped reading and also that my tastes might have broadened over the more than several years since I was at university, I borrowed it and I read it through. It wasn't a rip-rolling yarn, but it wasn't unreadable either. So in the end I was left with the vague joy that I'd now ticked that off the list of books that I hadn't finished. So for sheer completism it was good to have finished it and also from a used to be English literature student sense it was good to have finished the classic to know how it ended and to be able to make my own judgment on why people might say it's a good book. And my overall judgment on it is that it isn't the book for me because of when and where it was written. Firstly, like many books, that were written prior to fast media such as television and the internet <coughs> excuse me it's more of a completist sprawling book as well as the core narrative of a man committing a murder and then facing the consequences there are side stories about the characters he interacts with. But there are also side stories about the characters that those characters interact with. So it's more than just secondary characters having subplots. It's several plots connected only by people in common. But these subplots drift away from the central narrative to an extent. And if I remember correctly, there's even a large amount, comparatively speaking, about rural postal services. So it's written very much more for a generation that wants a book to be a vast experience rather than my upbringing of there being lots of books that I could read and books being compared to faster ways of entertainment. But secondly, I don't speak Russian so I read it in translation which will firstly have changed the flow so might well have made it slightly less fluid and also, I don't speak Russian, I'm not Russian. The 
meta language, the way that Russians think based on their upbringing, the little things they'd be aware of instinctively, aren't there for me. So the book had footnotes, but having to flick to the back to check a footnote to find out what something was didn't really help with the flow, or alternatively, not reading the footnotes. And well, well, is the reason, is this footnoted because it's significant, or is it footnoted because the translator has an interesting side story about how a different person also used this word, or just a straight translation of what the word is, that it's this particular kind of horse and carriage as opposed to a different kind of horse and carriage. So the flow wasn't there for me. But, but stripped of the fact it was written for a very different audience, both in terms of expectation and mental state, the plot, the core plot that most people would say Crime and Punishment is about, if they had to pick it, the thing it was about, is interesting, but not enthralling enough to get past the other issues. So it's not something that, it's not a book I feel in any way that I lost out by not reading it sooner or a book that in any way I feel that I didn't finish the first time because I didn't have the experience for it. With more time, I would have read the book when I was in my early 20s and would have finished it with the same, it's, I can see why critics like it, but it's not entertainment for me. But uh, apart from that, so if I buy a book, it's mine for as long as I want it. So I'll read it and I'll either keep it or not. So the only books I own I haven't finished are ones I haven't started or the one I happen to be in the process of reading my way towards the end of. Library books, I'll take out a stack of library books, I'll read them. And if I happen to be in the middle of a book, when it's time to return it, I'll renew it because I like reading to the end of books. So unless someone else has requested a book that I'm in the middle of reading when it's time to return it, and that book isn't enthralling enough that I want to try and track down a copy to finish it, I'll finish all the books I borrow unless I didn't start them. Because sometimes, occasionally, I'll get out eight books, I'll read six of them in the loan period, and then there are eight books in the library that I'd prefer to read over those two that I haven't read yet. So there are books I've intended to start, haven't started, and haven't finished, obviously, but there are now only two books that I can think of that I haven't finished. War and Peace and Desolation Angels. And I don't feel any desire to hunt those down because they weren't interesting enough to me to finish them the first time. So, there's my long, rambling and wandering simple answer. Toodaloo!